this particular Z Files wound up really because of suggestion. Mayor Cato said, Cal, you need to come listen to this band we're playing tonight. So I said, okay, I'll go over there. And after I heard the beginning of one song, I went and grabbed my camera out of the car and said, I got to get some of this on video because that pretty camera back there takes good stereo audio when I'm sitting that far back. So we're with Kim Whaley. Uh, Jody Dunn is a friend of ours, and he has told me that one of the reasons that the Big Red Machine is the success it is today, because he's got some fantastic farm teams between Davidson and Show River Middle School. You're the gal at Show River. So you've gone working with the youngsters that you sent on to high school. Now you're getting some of them back and some of their parents and grandparents, I think. That is so awesome. You're right. Uh, I get to work with the small kids, and then I get to work with the big kids on Monday nights. And we have several pairs of, like, grandparents and their grandchildren, mothers and uh, sons, mothers and daughters, dads and daughters. So it's just really awesome to see uh, them actually be able to come and make music together. Well, how did it, Lee Emerson is here with us. Now, Lee, I understand that you kind of came up with this idea, began pushing some ideas. Let's try something like this out. Well, I... Uh, um, I work at Upbeat Music, okay. and over there we've had a number of people come into the store asking for an opportunity to play. We get a number of adults who perhaps haven't played since high school who are looking for an opportunity to get their horn out and start playing, and eventually so many people had come in asking that question that I started talking to some of our local people about making this happen. I talked with Mayor Cadle, he was extremely supportive. I met with Kim and she offered to let us use her band room and offered her uh, conducting skills and it has grown from there. It certainly has. How many, you started out with, I understand, maybe uh, a little over a dozen people? Right, at our first rehearsal I think we had 15 people. We have a picture of that first rehearsal and now we've grown to, we average around 45 uh -huh. now. And they come all the way, we have Baker, Baker represented, uh, Mossy Head represented, Navarre, Fort Walton Beach, Niceville. All these people come together to make music. Well, that's great. And of course, you mentioned the family thing, just like the Dunn uh, group over there at the high school is in, uh, off to college now, and you've got some of your family in your group too. I do too. Um, that's another really special thing is I get to make music with my daughters. I have a French horn playing daughter and a bassoon playing daughter. We get to every Monday night come together and make music. Another really special thing is, is a lot of these students uh, I taught, you know, as beginners, and now when they go on to high school, I kind of, I, I had lost touch with them, and now I, I'm able to reconnect with them, and as I look out there and I see their faces, as I cue them to come in and stuff, it's just really, really quite special, right. something I very, very much enjoy. And then you get some from that other farm team at Davidson that went through the high school yeah, and come exactly. back, right? Exactly, yes, yes, uh, Mr. Treadway over there does an awesome job, and so I love, I get to meet those students, too, that, uh, that grew up under him, and are now on the Big Red Machine, and further on, I've gone on to college a lot we have college students in our group too so it's just it's really a joyful experience I was watching a National Geographic thing talking about how we communicate and really music was one of the early earliest forms of communicating in life on this planet oh absolutely and if you go to any the, the most remote tribe in the jungles they're they're going to express themselves some way through music whether it's beating on stones or sticks or tribal dancing uh, I don't think there's anywhere you can go on the earth and not express yourself with through music and music music brings people together when nothing else will it tends to transcend so many political and other differences that divide people we all get together we have no no conflicts or issues that come up we just get together and make music and in essence it created multiple industries in our world broadcasting recorded music etc not all the thing in video now if somebody hears this or would or sees it and would like to be involved in this uh, who, what would they do uh, one of the so best ways is we have a website. Uh, it's under North, North, North Okaloosa Community Band. Uh, we are on Facebook. That is one way to reach us. Also, you can reach Lee at UpbeatMusic.com or call Upbeat Music at 398-4009 and ask for Lee. And I'll get your information and put you on our email list. And I'm sure your boss man there kind of supports this idea of he's having more music. He's been extremely supportive of this and has actually made it part of my job description so I can um, actually do this as part of my employment. Next piece we're going to go from the movie theater to the stage, to the Broadway musical stage. The song America is from the musical West Side Story, composed, composed by Leonard Bernstein. This is a musical in which a modern day Romeo and Juliet are involved in New York street games. On the harsh streets of the Upper West Side, Two gangs battle for control of the turf. The situation becomes complicated when a gang member falls in love with a rival gang's sister. America is sung when the leader of the Puerto Rican gang suggests that they all just move back to Puerto Rico. 
However, the women in the group are outraged at the thought of leaving America, and a dance battle occurs. So we hope you enjoy America from West Side Story. Thank you. 
these guys are fun up here on this page. So, got to share a little story with you. A few weeks ago, when we were getting ready for this concert, I asked uh, members of the band who would volunteer to, to write a short little blurb for us to introduce each piece. And so we were going through rehearsal, we were taking some nominations of who, who would volunteer. Well, then, you know, it got to a, a dull point where somebody wasn't volunteering, so I chose my daughter. You know, I said, you, do this. Well, then she came to me at the break, and she said she really wanted to do Beauty and the Beast later. And I said, oh. And she said, I saw the baritone player. He raised his hand. I said, oh, he did. <laughs> so I walked over to him during the break, and I said, so you would like to do Jersey Boys? He goes, what? I, I never said that. I said, well, she said you did. And you have to understand my daughter, she's really shy. And she turned around, and she turned about 87 shades of red. And Dan, uh, Dan our baritone girl, he goes, I'm watching you. So, Dan, uh, he went ahead and wrote this piece. Now, he did a um, kind of one of his own, and then he did a more serious one. And I talked to some band members, and they want us to read the more fun one, the more entertaining one. So here we go, from Dan. He says, as requested by our young bassoonist, I put down some information on Jersey Boys for the concert. I hope this is what you had in mind. Our next selection presented for your enjoyment is Jersey Boys. It's a delightful collage of antique pop tunes such as I Get Around, Help Me Rhonda, and California Girls. On second thought, that's my bad, that's the Beach Boys, not the Jersey Boys. <laughs> I had the right decade, but the wrong coast. Jersey Boys is actually a collection of songs taken from the Broadway musical The Four Seasons, composed and performed by Frankie Vivaldi. Known only as Frankie by smitten female fans of the day, he was a stylistic trendsetter and showed unprecedented hubris by performing such songs as Walk Like a Man while using his girlish falsetto voice. <laughs> it was ironic and yet catchy. This stylistic trend continued beyond the 1960s and led to the success of other performing artists, such as the Brothers Gibb. But unfortunately, as time went on, this technique was also misused and arguably destroyed by some of today's contemporary performers, such as Robin Thicke. <laughs> the band arrangement we will be performing today is unusual in that it presents a unique opportunity for the woodwind section, who are often lurking in the shadows of the louder and, of course, better sounding brass section. <laughs> if you listen carefully for the song Ragdoll, you will not know we are playing it, because the beautiful woodwind accompaniment will be covering up the melody which is being played by the euphonium section. <laughs> I know no one in the audience knows where euphonium is, so I will just tell you that it is, in fact, a brass instrument. <laughs> but due to its range and tone quality, it is easily covered up, and the woodwind players know this, so who can blame them for enjoying some long overdue revenge? So now, with no further misinformation, I present to you highlights from Jersey Boys. Written by our own friend, who told me to take me
I heard the euphoniums. You know what euphoniums are, right? Did you hold them up for them? There they are. Where's Dot? There she is. She told her I can hear you. Sounded good. Sounded good. All right. So, you know, accompaniment to movie soundtracks could not be complete without Disney. You know, we got to get into the Disney movies. My favorites. The next one we're going to do is the, from the 1967 Walt Disney classic animated movie, The Jungle Book. The Bare Necessities is arguably the most alluring song from the film, sung by Baloo the Bear and Mowgli, his adopted man cub. The song advocates for a life of simplicity, as Baloo is happy with just what he needs to survive. Humans generally don't live in the woods and eat ants, but the lesson still applies, as stripping back unnecessary complications in life can greatly reduce stress and induce happiness. So simply stated, here is The Bare Necessities.
Uh, isn't that a beautiful piece? I love all that, that music. Okay, now something more familiar back to the Disney stage. Composer Alan Menken and lyricist Howard Ashman wrote the soundtrack for the 1991 movie Beauty and the Beast. The songs, they sound very theatrical, they were influenced by French classical, pop, and Broadway music. According to Alan Menken, the film's songs grew out of the fact that the film was written to almost exist as a stage production. The songs tend to convey a wide range of emotions from poignancy to joy. It was one of the most popular movies and still is today. So please enjoy our selection from Beauty and the Beast.
guys out there have seen the latest, the film version that just came out. Huh? Not too many people? It's fun. I like it. I love the music. I love the music. All right. We have two more, right guys? Yeah, two more. And this next piece was a new one to me. Um, it was brought to us by our euphonium player, Dot. And she had played it in another local community band that she had been in, and she said that band loved it, so she wanted to bring it to us. It's from the television. Comes from There was a Civil War series, and the title of the piece is Ashokan Farewell. And it was used, uh, Ken Burns, uh, if you've heard of that historian, in 1984, he heard Ashokan Farewell and he was moved by it. So he used it in two of his documentary films, Huey Law and The Civil War, which features the original recording by Fiddle Fever. The Civil War drew the greatest attention. It is played 25 times throughout the 11-hour series. And the song underlies, takes up nearly an hour of the film. Well, the, the, the tune was written by, let's see, the man's name is Jay Unger in 1982. And he and his wife used to uh, have a festival, like a, a show and fiddle and dance camp. And at the end of the camp, this became their farewell. So that every, I guess every night or whatever, they would play this waltz, this song. And he, he attributed, he said it's like, a, the song is like coming out of a sense of longing and loss after the annual Ashokan Music and Dance Camps ended. So maybe they played it at the end of the camps every year. So it became, it's like an Scottish lament. So I think, hope you enjoy this. It has some really lush chords in it. It's called Ashokan Farewell.
guys are on tonight, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. they sound like good. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and clap. We have the pause. All right, so we have one final uh, piece for you guys tonight. We hope you've enjoyed the concert. It's been a blast playing for you. We have a lot of fun each Monday night, so uh, we hope to see some of you guys. If you ever play an instrument, come out and join us. We'll, we'll get you going again. All right, since opening day in 2003, this swashbuckling tale has grossed more than $654 million. Anybody know what it is? He knows. What is it, Ryan? Pirates of the Caribbean. He's right. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean star cast of Energetic Score launched a movie franchise worth billions. With music written by German composer Klaus Badelt, this franchise has created a memorable and exciting storyline for all to follow. This particular arrangement was arranged by the longtime music director and producer for Walt Disney, uh, Walt Disney World, Ted Ricketts. We are happy to leave you with the musical highlights from Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, which, you know, in just a few weeks there will be the, another installment of the Pirates of the Caribbean, so this is kind of timely. So, we hope you've enjoyed it, and here's the Pirates of the Caribbean.
We're talking with Kim Whaley and Lee Emerson here, part of the North Okaloosa Community Band, but I guess people like you, since you're coming from Pensacola, but mm -hmm. work in Okaloosa, you could have people from anywhere that oh, they want to drive over here. Oh, absolutely. We'll, we, just so they can play music, we don't care where they come from. Okay, and I know we've got some uh, old city councilmen and old Air Force colonels hanging around that uh, get out those horns and say they haven't played and haven't played for years, but they can get back into it. Yes, I had one uh, lady approach me. She said, "Yes, but I haven't played my instrument in 40 years." I said, "Great!" And she's gotten in the band, and it took her a while to get going, but now she's in there playing every week. Now you've got some performances coming up. Uh, those of you who are seeing this right now, I want to remind you, May 20th is Armed Forces Day in America. And this is our 10th year now. And I've been on that committee since we started that with some other great folks. And so it's free food, free fun for everybody, and free entertainment. And so your group is going to be performing there. Yes, we'll be there at 11, and we get to pull out our patriotic music, which we love, uh, playing some marches and everybody's favorite Armed Forces salutes. So we're looking forward to it. That's great. And if somebody comes out there and they want to talk being in the band or finding out about music, they can come chat to either one of you. Absolutely. And we would be so happy to hear. I know that they're out there. We have been cranking out fantastic musicians through our music education system here for decades. So I know we probably have many musicians that are looking for this opportunity. That's good. So, folks, if you like the music, the next thing you want to do is on May the 20th, come on out to the Spanish Trail Park from 11 a.m. till about 3. You'll hear this band and a lot more and lots of good free food, too. And we'll be there on the radio telling you all about it. 